What's up? It's Will, and I'm here with the Bleed Lines playthrough. Was that, was that, was that, was that scary enough? Let's get out a few preliminaries. There's only one kind of pick that I use. People ask me all the time. No, they don't. But if they did, they would ask me and I would say I played Jazz 3s. That's it. Look, at I played this one so much that the fucking, look, it wore off. The ink wore off. Let's see, this one says Jazz 3 Dunlop 1, 1. 1.4, 1, 4 millimeters. I don't think I specified earlier what kind of strings that I use. Um, so just for the record, I use uh, D'Addario um, 11 heavy bottom medium top. I don't think I said that before. For the sake of the video, we're going to be using the Head Rush, the Sony, whatever that is, and we're going to be using the Metro Savant setting. This is it. This is my setup here. Uh, this is my clean. I only use three settings on stage. I have no clue what else is in this machine. Cam and Good Bars kind of set this up for me. I don't really play with anything but... Um, the master i'm really a simple guitar player my regular rig on stage is an all black orange rocker verb mk3 it's a 100 watt tube amp but i have recently in the last season or so been playing the head rush and i am definitely an organic tube valve kind of guy uh, but my back uh, is a head rush guy. Yeah, so cool thing about this is we plug it in, we run it to the front of the house, and it goes directly in. This is my setting. It's called clean as a whistle. I use this for all my clean settings. And then over here, I have my heavy metal distortion setting. I got a compressor, a parametric EQ. Um, and then I kind of stack the same thing here with a volume knob. And this purple guy is a lead channel. And then I have this really weird one called Cosmic Savant. Um, that, I don't know, that's when I'm feeling um, risky. Yeah. Those are my three settings. It's the only three settings I've ever used. I truly believe that this should be simple enough. But our guitars are tuned to an open drop C kind of position. So on the first bottom string in third fret, um, our first note would be a D sharp. And if you slide all the way up to the seventh fret, you're gonna have a G note. Pay attention as we stack this vertically on the first bottom strings. Pay attention, because we're gonna be using this pattern over and over again during the song. I think I think it's really important to also know that there are two guitars written for this song. So there is the guitar that I play and then there is downstage, off stage, right Mr. Loud and he plays a harmony and duality to this song that can only be fully measured when you're at the end of the stage. <clears throat> no, seriously, to get the full effect of this song in stereo, it comes out April 9th. So you guys can go check it out. Make sure you pre-save that. I mean, just having a good sense of rhythm, some cool pinch harmonics, and following that stacked guideline and the pattern that I'm about to show you, most guitar players should be able to play this uh, within the first few minutes or so. Here is the intro and the theme to Bleed Lines. All right, now what I hear around the block is that this, this song is at a buck 45. 
I don't know how much truth there is to that. But we got, I got my trusty metronome. It's probably the best thing, best tool I have in the house. That's pretty fucking accurate, man. I know this metronome is really loud, but for all purposes and professionalism, I'm going to keep it here so you guys can tell where the tempo of the song is. Seriously, don't get crazy, because we're going to do this in two parts, because it's, it's a little weird. We want to be able to practice this in chunks. So we have the first solid groundwork for the rhythm laid out, and then we'll sprinkle on some embellishments. Pay attention. All right, I'm gonna show you something that I do all the time. This whole thing has to deal with the sensitivity of your right hand palm mute. And what I like to do is bring it up, the volume. I chirp it up just to about 12 o'clock. I know a lot of guys really push the gain in. I'm gonna show y'all for an example. Floored. I don't want to floor it. I don't want to see. Oh, I don't want to floor it. That's not what I want to do. Look, we're gonna back that fucker off. Right about there. Pop, 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 pop. Now that we're mother bucking ready, we're gonna start the tempo and we're gonna show you a very basic rhythm juggle that's gonna continue throughout the verse part. <laughs> I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna go out there, here I go. I'm gonna go out there and say that most people that were watching and paying attention could tell that I was only playing a single string. So with a little bit of effort and a little bit of patience, most guitar players should be able to play that little juggle. Y'all should be able to play that sequence with a little care and paying a little attention. With a few moments a week, I think you'll have it. All right, let's look at something sharp, shall we? Let's look back at D sharp, and let's remember that stacked pattern with G on the bottom string. Do y'all remember that from the theme earlier? Yeah, 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 it was easy. Let's look at the baby brother in open C string, the fourth string from the top, the fourth string from the top, the equivalent open C. The equivalent open C is going to have that D. It's going to have that D. The big goal here, the key takeaway is we want to try to play that original pattern in juggle that we had in the open C rhythm part, we want to incorporate embellishments, hammering on from D and D sharp, recalling that position at G and G flat, and incorporating the chugged and palm muted juggle from the original pattern. I, I think it is notable here to point out that the turnaround incorporates the open G string here, um, uh, G sharp, and C flat, uh, landing on um, the fretted C uh, combination on the fifth string. So that is to be noted, and it sounds a little something like this. Man, I, I feel like of all the parts and applications of the song are probably the easiest. It's coming up here to the eighth fret and barring this G major chord. And I even um I do put in that D sharp embellishment in the chord. So I'll come up here to the eighth fret and 
bar that chord. And then of course I'll stick that that same D sharp. So, you know, if your D is sharp, you really got to watch where you're going to stick it. That's the key takeaway in all of this. But we want to fret this chord and the real pudding in your pants is the picking pattern. I can never remember what the pick. I can never. I can never really remember what the picking pattern it is. It goes da 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 Reminiscent of our pattern earlier. Remember our theme and our stack pattern earlier. If you can remember that stack pattern earlier, let's come up the fretboard and stack that same pattern right here at the eighth fret with G sharp, that D again. Continuing in the tradition and staying within the realm and idea of our symmetrically stacked pattern at the third and seventh fret, we're going to slide that up to where the first finger is going to sit equally and symmetrically at the eighth fret, giving us that G sharp, D sharp, and stacked G sharp chord position with our pinky and fourth finger now landing at the 12th position to fret the note C, A, and then C again in that symmetrical same pattern, continuing with the theme. Here is all the chorus pieces together with our new symmetrical pattern and the phrasing and melody parts included. Where's the turnaround, Will? How do you do the turnaround hammer on pull off juggle thingy at the third fret thing? All right, here's how you do it. I want to thank the total of five people that watched this video. And I do have a disclaimer. There is some fine print. I'm going to attempt to now play this one shot, one take. And if anything that I've attempted to teach you today doesn't seem accurate um, in the playthrough, it's because it isn't. You may find that if you ask Cam, you may find that if you ask Johnny, that they have their own take and their own spin on it. There is no accurate way to play sepsis music. There is no right or wrong way to play our music. Uh, so if you happen to have your own version or your own rendition, we encourage you, I encourage you to make up any type of version of the song as you wish. Here is the playthrough to Bleed Lines.
that about wraps things up. That is the culmination of our journey this evening in exploring one of many versions of uh, my song, Bleed Lines. Which is one of two singles we plan on releasing prior to releasing our second album, Take the World by Swarm. So again, go check out that new single. It comes out April 9th. The song's called Bleed Lines. So thank you very much for watching. I love all of y'all. And make sure that you pick up the new single, Bleed Lines, April 9th.